Hi, and welcome to CML Tech Check. In this show, we are going to cover different topics like computers, electronics, gadgets, and a lot more nerd stuff. Today, we are going to take a closer look at the original Mac Pro from 2006. We got this machine from a friend who didn't need it anymore. This beautiful computer is a piece of history and art, and we want to find out if it is any good in 2019. The Mac Pro 1.1 was released on the 7th of August 2006. After 13 years of using PowerPC processor architecture, this was the first Apple computer based on an Intel architecture. The Mac Pro replaced the Power Mac G5 machines. It was originally delivered with OS X 10.4 Tiger and it's upgradable up to OS X 10.7 line without any further modifications. The Mac Pro 1.1 has an Intel 5000X chipset. The standard configuration like we have here has two dual-core Intel Xeon Woodcrest processors. They have a clock speed of 2.66 GHz but they are only 32-bit. This machine here has 7 GB of DDR2 RAM at a clock speed of 667 MHz. The graphics card in the PCI Express slot is a NVIDIA G4 7300 GT with only 256 MB of RAM and a 128-bit interface. The card has two DVI connectors. The machine came with four 750GB Seagate hard disk drives. There is a DVD-ROM with double layer support. The Mac Pro 1.1 has following connectors. Two gigabit Ethernet, five USB 2.0, two Firewire 400, two Firewire 800, one audio in mini check, two audio out mini check and one optical in and output. First of all, the Mac Pro 1.1 weighs a ton, 19.2 kilograms, that's heavy, and also the CPU power consumption is heavy. Under full load, it is 250 watts compared to 205 watts by a 2013 Mac Pro. But the bigger problem is that the Mac Pro 1.1 CPU, even in idle mode, still drains 171 watts. So let's open up the case and see what's inside. To unlock the case you need to pull a lever and after that you can remove the side panel. Here is the NVIDIA 7300 GT graphics card and three empty PCI slots. These here are the RAM riser cards. We pull them out and with them a lot of dust and dirt. Before we can put them back in we need to clean up. Later we will take a closer look at the RAM configuration. The first hard disk drive we replaced with a 120GB SSD and reinstalled OS X onto it. And here are the hard disk base 2, 3 and 4. Like the side panel they are also locked with the lever at the back. And when unlocked you can remove them. Here is one of the 750GB hard disk drives. We put it back in and close the case again. We hooked up everything and are ready to go. So let's start the machine and see how OS X 10.7 line works. When we go up here, type info and click on this, the system informations will pop up. So you can go and verify all the components properties here in detail. Maybe you was asking yourself why this machine has 7GB of RAM. So when we take a look at the RAM configuration, you can see why. It's a mix of 2.5GB, 2.1GB and 2.2GB modules.
The app store seems to work, but I'm not sure how many of these programs would work on such an old machine. When we open up Safari, there is a problem because most of the websites ask for a newer browser. The Safari update is not possible. Okay, then let's try to install Firefox. Same problem here. Your system doesn't meet the requirements to run Firefox. The browser needs at least OS X 10.9 to run. Also, Chrome doesn't want to run easily. Finally, we run Cinebench to make some performance tests. For some reason, the OpenGL test won't run and crashes after a minute. The CPU test works. We fast forward the test, but the result is depressing. Only a score of 164 points. Even a third generation i5 with 1.7 GHz is faster. So there's nothing more to do than look at the pros and cons. Unfortunately, this Mac is unusable in a modern environment. Nevertheless, we'd like to experience how it is to work with a Mac. That's why we are going to build our own Mac in the next episode. So stay tuned and please like and subscribe.